Okay. So aside from the opioid, you know, the opioid process behind gluten, we also know that, that or behind autism, we know that gluten oftentimes causes nutritional deficiencies and many of these deficits in a developing baby. And this is, this is true whether the, it's a baby and infant, and this is also true of pregnant mothers. So this makes it kind of doubly important. So those of you who maybe are pregnant, those of you who have friends or family members that are pregnant, nutritional deficiencies during pregnancy can increase the risk for the development of autism because many of these deficiencies will, will hinder the way the nervous system develops and the brain develops. And so that's one of the risk factors. But we also know that deficits in infants, you know, so once they're born, those deficits in infants can also create autism-like symptoms. And so although this is not comprehensive, this is not a, a intended to be an end-all be-all list of the nutrient deficiencies that are commonly seen to be associated with um, neuropsychiatric behaviors in children, these are some of the more common ones, okay? And folate and B12, very, very common. These two um, necessary to form white matter uh, in the brain, which is very important for brain development. Thiamine, very, very critical for brain development as well. Vitamin C, vitamin C is essential for the production of neurotransmitters like dopamine. Um, and very, again, very important for the development of the brain. Vitamin E is a very potent, potent antioxidant, protects the structures of the brain um, from becoming damaged, very important for development. We know a, a number of research studies connect poor brain development with vitamin E. We know that vitamin D, there have actually been studies that show that autism spectrum disorder, uh, children that are diagnosed tend to have vitamin D deficiencies. We know vitamin A, the same thing. And then omega-3 fatty acids, particularly the subfraction of omega-3 called DHA, docosa hexaenoic acid, very, very important for brain formation. And so these are super, super common. My advice, um, all pregnant women should be tested for nutritional deficiency and definitely get on that. Now, a great prenatal would be very important. So if we're trying to have a healthy baby, a great prenatal is gonna be important in that and that prenatal should be incorporating or encompassing all of these nutrients and then some, but to have the doctor test, you know, prenatal might not be enough. And I've seen this be the case in, in women where they were on a great prenatal, but they still, when we tested them, had a lot of micronutrient deficiencies that, uh, you know, again, that contribute to poor outcomes, that poor health of the baby, that contribute to poor um, fertility uh, and, and, and pregnancy issues. So those are all important. Now I wanna dive into Another, a couple of other things here. Let's move these out of the way. I want to talk about some of the other things. So gluten is a major, a major factor here, but gluten is one of many factors and the gluten induced nutritional deficiency component, certainly very important. But this, um, this chart was published a few years ago by, by MIT, uh, Dr. Stephanie Seneff. And what she found, um, was she found that these autism rates, as you follow this curve, so you look at these blue lines, these blue bar graphs here, these blue bar graphs um, and this red line are basically autism conjoined with glyphosate. So the red line itself is glyphosate use. So you can see this kind of line correlating and trending up. We can see here autism is the, the blue bars, right? So you see these are the incidents or rates of diagnos diagnosing autism cases. And this graph goes all the way up to 2011. If we were to expand it out to 2020, it would keep going up. So again, there's a correlation. And I have to be careful here. Some people say, well, correlation and causation aren't the same thing. And, and you're absolutely right. I don't think we can jump to a conclusion to say that glyphosate is the cause of autism, but I think it's important to, to recognize that this correlation exists and it should be studied, especially in light of some of the things that we know about glyphosate. Glyphosate destroys life and, and it really has an impact, a big impact on the microbiome. And why is, is this becoming more and more clear and more and more important? We're now seeing, many of you may have heard of fecal transplants. 
This is where you take the bacteria from a healthy individual and transplant it fecally into, um, rectally into another patient to see whether or not it can impact them. And we're, we're doing fecal transplants now in diseases like colitis or intestinal inflammation and finding dramatic changes. We're seeing these same types of changes in people with diabetes and obesity. And we're seeing these changes in kids with autism spectrum disorder. So taking healthy bacteria from a healthy individual and implanting it into a diseased individual and seeing improvements, right? So what does that tell us? That tells us something's impacting the microbiome potentially in a negative way. We know as a, as a pesticide and an herbicide, we know that glyphosate impacts the microbiome in a negative way. And so certainly if you're eating all those, you know, those children's cereals and you're eating all these genetically modified, uh, heavily loaded with glyphosate, your corn, your soy, your sugar, your alfalfa, uh, your grain, predominantly your wheat and your corn and your rice, these are heavily, heavily, you know, farmed with this chemical, then we have to come back and say, and start questioning this, right? And we have to start asking this question. The problem in today's world is that, is that anytime we find a good correlation, if we're up against industry, in this case, who owns glyphosate? It's pharmaceutical industry, right? Bayer. And it's the same thing that happens anytime we find negative research on, on a drug, negative research on the product of a pharmaceutical company. A lot of times this information gets stomped out. It gets ridiculed. There's a lot of press around... Um, trying to destroy and defame and deface the credibility of the doctors who discover, discover these correlations or to try to dismiss these correlations. And I think, you know, science today is less scientific, especially in today's world. Um, and, it, and actually, it's got more industry influence than, than what it can handle if we want to really, really get to the truth. But we have to start asking these questions, meaning science has to get more diligent and we have, to, we have to kick industry and industry special interest out of science because they're destroying, uh, they're destroying our ability to get to the answers. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.